judges, I stand before you today to answer the question, what is the largest barrier to the success for state bans on gas powered cars? Today, I will be talking about how the demand for lithium ion batteries exceeds the supply, how lithium ion batteries are becoming more expensive, making an unsustainable option for people from underprivileged areas who just can't afford these sky high prices, and finally, how we are restricted in our mining of lithium. Lithium ion batteries are the type of batteries that power electric cars. Now, as with any resource like oil, it's a finite resource. Sometimes there just isn't enough of that particular material, or a shortage of this material can lead to longer wait times or higher prices. According to an engineering.com report, most of our global lithium supply exists in Argentina, Bolivia, and Chile between strict controls and varying business policies. Not enough mining of lithium exists to keep up with demand. Letting lithium mining go completely unchecked also presents a poor option. In Chile's case, it might just be smart business. By putting tight controls on how much lithium they mine, the supply lasts longer. The automotive industry bears the blame for the quick shift from sustainable production to the present lithium ion battery shortage. Tesla makes one sweet looking car to be sure, but they use more than 5,000 lithium ion cells on the low end. Their high end models contain more than 7,000 cells. Compare that to the just three cells in a compact 12 volt battery pack. Even the largest battery packs for cordless outdoor equipment, for example, use between 15 to 60 cells. Battery powered electric vehicles simply use hundreds or even thousands of times more lithium ion cells. As demand rises with the popularity and or regulation of battery powered uh, vehicles or equipment, most experts expect the lithium ion battery shortage to start having a greater and greater effect. On electric vehicles, people already experience long wait times after placing an order. Now, another key constraint on establishing a ban on gas powered cars is the price. Now keep in mind that we are in a lithium ion battery shortage or close to be a shortage. Now what happens when the demand exceeds the supply? The answer is to raise prices. The price for lithium carbonate, the compound that gets extracted from the ground, has shot up 432%, 432% year over year, hitting nearly $62,000 per metric ton in April. In the past six years prior, for comparison, it averaged around $11,000. That's a $50,000 difference. The price spike is due to the booming electric vehicle market, which is putting demand pressure on battery producers, which in turn puts demand pressure on the mineral suppliers. While the Earth has plenty of lithium to go around for the foreseeable future, the supply needs to be extracted from grind pools and underground reserves. And current mining operations aren't sufficient to keep up with the auto industry's growing and growing needs. Now, gas-powered cars are still a popular option for people from underprivileged areas who can't afford these electric cars. What we are doing is we are telling these people who can't afford these cars Either you drive these electric cars that you can barely or can't, cannot afford at all, or you do not drive at all. Now, if lithium ion batteries are in such short demand, or lithium to be precise, why don't we just mine more, you might ask? More than half of the global resources are located in the so-called lithium triangle between Argentina, Bolivia, and Chile where producers pump lithium-rich brine from underground lakes and other low-lying salt areas, and then allow the liquid to evaporate for around 12 to 28 months to essentially yield a slurry that can be profitably processed. Current technology recovers only about 50% or half of the lithium in the brine according to Bloomberg on May 25th of 2022. 
that's 50% or half of the lithium in those brine being wasted. Much of the remaining supply, however, comes from deposits of an igneous rock called spodimine, or spodimine, spodimine uh, with Australia being the biggest miner. But ore is roasted and then leached with sulfuric acid, and the silvery gray residue is typically shipped to China to be made into lithium hydroxide and lithium carbonate, which is definitely not um, carbon friendly, especially with the shipping costs and the fast process needed to make it into lithium. And those are compounds that can be combined with nickel or cobalt to make battery electrolytes or battery electrodes or with solvents to make electrolytes. The quickest way to increase supply is to ramp up output from these existing sources. Gianfeng Lithium Company, one of the world's largest producers, said that it'll use record profits to boost its output. In essence, just reinvesting the money. Now, Australia's Pilbara Minerals Ltd. aims to raise production capacity more than 50% by the September quarter by expanding its Pilgangura mine in Western Australia, a project that includes Chinese partners, Great Wall Motor Co. and CATL. For many of brine lithium producers, increasing output quickly is constrained by their permits and the time taken to let the liquid evaporate. One longer term solution is to find new deposits. Mining superpowers Australia and Canada have both promised to help develop critical mineral resources, including lithium. All in all, to conclude, the largest barrier to success for state bans on gas-powered cars is their batteries, and to help remove that barrier, we need to find new lithium deposits and ramp up production from existing mines or brine pools, and we also need to find a way to um, make an affordable solution to help people in low-income communities to afford these cars. That might mean with their sky-high prices, that people essentially won't be able to drive them, which means that we need to find a way to lower the prices and make this process more sustainable. Thank you.